Hi folks, Lou here to talk about more ways to enable you to differentiate between old school and new school in RPGs. So I was planning to attend an RPG convention in my state and I asked the organizers what topic they'd like me to talk about. I would think a talk on how to design or key elements of an old school tabletop role-playing game that are essential is what was suggested. Well, because of the pandemic, it didn't happen until much more recently. And in the meantime, I released my initial version of my take in January of 2022. And now I'm making additions thanks to Steve Avery, who worked with Gary Gigax and with my attendance to GrogCon recently. So we have six more identifiers and two that are not identifiers to talk about in the succeeding minutes. Here's one, campaigns versus one-shots, that's quite important and that Grog Talk, in effect, made me more aware of, or Grog Con. Old school is campaign-oriented. And of course, some of those campaigns have lasted decades. We're not talking about a campaign, quote unquote, which is just, just one story arc that's 10 adventures or something like that. We're talking about something that goes on for years. It's hard to use old school principles in one shot games, especially when there's a time limit as at tournaments at conventions. The fundamental problem here is when players know they're using the characters only one time, do they care what happens to those characters? Do they care about failure? Well, in a tournament you can fail, but if it's a one shot that's not a tournament, there's not even real failure. So can they take a long-term view in a one-off adventure? Old school is much more about long-term view than much of the new school, which tends to be short-term, just like modern society. The rewards are low key in old school games. The legendary Monty Hall game is the worst way to do things where you give away lots of treasure and lots of magic. You don't want to do that. You want to make your players happy in other ways. If you do, then when they do get a magic item, they're very happy about it. They don't need tons of magic items. Too many magic items means a lot of trouble later on for the GM. And this is one reason why I think the magic tuning rule in D&D 5e is excellent. You can only tune a few big magic items to yourself and use them at one time. And of course, too much money can haunt a GM later too, when people have 100,000 plus gold pieces or even hundreds of thousands, they can do all kinds of things that perhaps don't make sense for what they are otherwise. Length. Uh, here's a quote from someone, uh, I don't know whether it's Twitter or something else. Uh, it may have been a comment to something. The amount of duration in decreases in modern games, but the amount of stimulus increases, a good environment for ADHD and others. Well, I don't know about ADHD, but certainly for all kinds of games, shorter than 50 years ago is regarded as better. It's true for movies and many other things as well. It's the age of instant gratification. In other words, old school game sessions tend to be much longer than new school. I've seen new school sessions that only lasted two hours and how can you get anything done? Um, you know, the expectation is old school that the sessions are going to be four, five, six hours and even longer. Old school focuses on the journey, not the destination. This is quite different from video gaming and the focus in video gaming on leveling up has leaked into tabletop gaming. Old school players focus on the journey, the adventure, on enjoying themselves, not on rising in levels. So going up a level is a rare thing in old school, especially as you get to higher levels. And by higher, I mean approaching 10th. I don't mean 20th or something ridiculous like that. I recall 
uh, not bothering to add up experience from a series of adventures we were on, not worrying about leveling up. And when I finally did add them up, I found I'd risen a level. But level rise was so rare then, it just didn't occur to me that that might happen. And I wasn't focusing on it. I was focusing on the adventure. So double figure levels in D&D terms is a big deal, not commonplace in old school. Role play, not skill rules and ability rules. Passive players often want to make a skill role or an ability role to, to resolve a situation. For example, I want to roll against my intelligence to solve the riddle, or I roll, roll my intimidation to try to intimidate some prisoner. This is a new school attitude. Old schoolers tend to role play these situations rather than dice roll when it's practical. And this is in keeping with the fundamental of RPGs, folks. It fundamentally, a role playing game is a negotiation between the players and the game master. That's all it is when you come down to it. The rules help shape that. And yes, you can have dice rolls, but ultimately it's a negotiation between the players and the GM where the GM is trying to do something uh, to help his players have fun, and the players are trying to convince the GM of this, that, or the other thing. Is old school an adversarial relationship between the GM and the players? No, this is not desirable. Any competent GM can wipe out a party without much trouble. Yes, there are incompetence. The GM is much more a neutral referee than an adversary. In the end, the GM's job is to scare the snot out of the players, not to kill their characters. It is not worship of the rules. I've seen people who try to slavishly adhere to the AD&D rules or some other rules. Old school is about attitudes, not about a set of rules. Even Gary Gigax himself didn't adhere entirely to his own rules, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And there are some really dumb rules, such as the training rule, which is dumb in reality. It doesn't match how people actually learn. And it's a failure in game design terms that was never repeated in later editions. So don't think that slavish adherence to the AD&D rules or some other set of rules is part of old school. It's not. You might want to see my bit from the GrogCon convention on the Grog Talk podcast. The URL is here. Thanks for listening.